Dave at Bullpen Cycles. We are back digging further deeper in to our Van Veen. So if you're not familiar with this motorcycle, I invite you to go back to our earlier video where we introduced this bike. My goal initially was to see if it turned over both rotors. I have the plugs out. There's no kick start. It's electric start only. But I didn't want to just energize the system and crank it over. So we oiled the cylinders And we did our old trick, jack up the wheel, put it in a high gear, and see if it turns over. I was able to select every gear, but the engine wasn't turning over. That's not good. Coming over here, now I started the teardown. I didn't have a video of everything. I like to try to get some work done. But I found the clutch was moving, but the rotor in the engine was not. This is the clutch down here. And it was not assembled correctly like it was apart. The diaphragm spring was in backwards, so there was no pressure on the plates, which made me ask why. Now here's something goofy. This is the retaining nut. Some gorilla hacked it off with a chisel, rather than getting a 41 millimeter socket. Now if I didn't have a 41 millimeter socket, I'd certainly get one before I put a hammer on my bike especially a bike as expensive as this one. So I went back through my documents before tearing it down further so we don't want to do any harm and I found a letter where they were requesting parts. They were requesting a helical output gear which the response was it's a match set and I thought maybe they meant the output gear here this is the output gear from the engine this is an idler gear slash starter clutch here's your starter here's the input gear for the transmission we can see they were in here because there's orange goo I'm expecting they meant the output gear for this drive shaft output from the transmission. Now that all turns freely and nicely so let's hope that's correct. My goal is here to put this back together. I'm going to use assembly lube on these gears since it's dry. Don't want to bust these gears that's a fine machine gear and I'm sure it's made out of unobtainium but anyway with assembly lube and everything back together we're gonna turn the motor over and use our Wankel compression tester which I will show you and see if we can get a picture of both rotors and each peak so the problem I initially had after taking the clutch apart, I wanted to turn over the motor and I'm able to, I just can't do it with one hand. Initially it would go about a third of the way and then stop. And then I'd rotate it the other direction, it would go a third of the way and stop at the same spot. Uh, I was thinking. Oh no, I got a boat anchor. Anyway, I took the exhaust off. Now these are weird. 
It's one piece held on by one bolt in the tail section and the two head bolts. I have, I don't know why I have them, but I have new old stock mufflers here. And I guess you have to uh, weld them to install them. They must have had a jig in the factory. I thought that was weird. Anyway, I took the exhaust off and then, now you can't see it, I was able to look in the exhaust port and as I slowly turned the motor, I eventually got the rotor past the bad spot and you can actually examine the knife edge of the rotor seal and it looked good. Well, I won't know for sure without doing a compression test but let me show you how it turns over. Ow! That's a big victory. I'm very encouraged. I can almost hear the vacuum coming out from each rotor tip. Otherwise, I would have had a big boat anchor, an expensive one. I have to fix this chewed up wiring harness, which looks like it got pinched. Thanks to our viewer comment Ambo4 who noted that our electrical system the alternator was the same as on certain early guzzies and air-cooled BMWs that enabled me to get the right puller and take that out and I can fix these broken wires so, thanks for the comment, Ambo4. So, let's hook up the compression tester and see what we got. Okay, so this is the Suzuki RE5 compression tester. It's a pretty straightforward device. It prints out a graph to show you each peak of the apex. Hook it up to 12 volts. And run your compression line to the spark plug. It was very hard to uh, get the compression line fed into the spark plug. I tried not to over tighten it. Um, it's I just you can't get a wrench in there and you can't put a socket on it. So We'll see uh, how it goes. All right, so we're gonna try to do this, hopefully without breaking anything. Okay, so I had the paper in wrong. That makes a big deal. I'm gonna hold that open. Oh, that's staying open. Oh wait, the linkage isn't hooked up. Oh, everything's a pain, huh? There we go. Okay, I melted that on.
this uh, tester seems to have a delayed reaction. You turn it on and it takes a minute to spin. We're testing the left hand cylinder now. And they're both of them all up to about 75 pounds, sometimes a tad more. I have the throttle blocked open the best I can. There's no throttle cable hooked up. Somebody was working on this bike and has it all a little bit goofed up. But uh, she turns over and I mean, between the six apexes, they're all reading exactly the same. So I gotta think that's good. It looks a little bit low from what I would think, but you know, maybe a twin rotor puts out less compression. I do know that once you get them running when they've been sitting, the compression tends to come back some as everything gets hot and loose. So uh, that's about the best we can do for now. Uh, all the apexes have equal pressure and uh, tune back later, see where we are next.